Wait, don't go anywhere. If you're looking to skip through this video, then I made it a lot easier for you to do that. So don't just go skipping on your own. Look down in the description. I gave you a table of contents of every component of the engine. So hang on, check that out. This is part three of the engine teardown videos. If you want to see the other parts, you can look down in the description. There should be links. If you go to my channel, this should all be a playlist and then you can find them there as well. Let's get dirty. There you go. First, we're going to start off with looking at something that I didn't necessarily tell you wrong, but I didn't give you enough information about. If you look here, this is the engine. And this part here I mentioned before may or may not be for some kind of bracketry with a big question mark. I didn't know what this was for. I've never seen it before. But perusing through engines on Amazon, I noticed this same engine later model, sorry, earlier model, and you can see that this is open. There was actually an extra lobe on the, uh, wow, that got weird, extra lobe on the camshaft that I was questioning as well. I didn't know what that was for. And as it turns out, it is to run a fuel pump, which looks something like this. There's this little finger looking dealio, and that lobe is going to then pump it as if you are pumping water out of the ground. Yeah. So anyway, there's your update on that. This is actually a hole for a fuel pump that was mounted to the engine. The newer Jeeps have an electronic fuel pump like most modern cars. Next up is the head gasket. This you'll, you've probably heard quite commonly, oh, the head gasket went and then the car was toast. Well, you can imagine as the head gasket seals the head to the block, um, it holds the compression. So very important component of engine working is the air being able to compress. If this breaks, the compression goes out and you don't have power anymore. It's quite unfortunate. Also, I need to note that I told you something wrong. Those holes that I pointed out in between the cylinders for the coolant, the head gasket actually blocks those. And so those must be there for manufacturing purposes and not actually for coolant to flow through as it doesn't pass into the block. So the head gasket blocks those. These, however, do allow for coolant to pass through and transfer to the block. Now that the head is removed from the engine, we're going to do a really quick check where we're going to feel inside the cylinder walls. Later, we're going to explore the cylinder walls and the cylinders and all of that. But right now, we're just going to do a little feel. And if you can feel a lip, that gives you an indicator as to how much wear has been taking place. And I do feel a small lip on these cylinder walls. Now what's interesting is that the lip is higher in some areas versus others. It's not always consistent, which does make sense because as the piston is moving up and down, uh, it's applying side loads to either wall. And so these walls should have more wear than these, which is not necessarily true. <laughs> That's cool. All right, you guys, now is the part where we're going to start looking at the bottom of the engine and start taking pistons and stuff out. So this should be pretty fun. Okay, look at this. You got some timing chain up here, crankshaft back here, and you got cam shaft in here. We're gonna just start taking things apart one by one. I'll tell you what we've got as far as bolts and it'll be good. I want to point out just a couple things to you. So the oil pan would normally be here, right? There's a gasket that follows along that you would take the oil pan off. Uh, this is the timing chain cover location that would also come off. You've got a oil pump that goes right here. Mine is removed because I've already removed it, but there's two bolts. All right, and that comes off. Maybe we can find out where the knock sound is coming from. So we're gonna be looking at bushings and things all throughout here, as well as the pistons, look for any kind of damage, scoring, whatever. 
All right, you've got two different sockets that can fit on here. One being a 21 millimeter. I also found that a 13 16 fits very well and actually it seems to fit a little bit more snug. So I'm actually gonna use the 13 16 socket. Fair warning, those are in really tight and if your engine stand happens to roll like mine does, you might have to be really creative with your footwork. I uh, locked my feet around the engine stand as I pulled and it made it a million times easier. So there's that. All right, stop, come closer. All right, you probably see this. One, two, and then you're gonna see a three and a four if the camera was wider. Cylinder one, cylinder two, three, and four. It might be good to note that you're gonna to wanna to put these back together in the same order. So take note of that, keep the same bolts, the same stuff, and then you can take tear it apart. All right, cylinder one, looks something like this on in the inside. One bolt, very oily, the other one, very not. Okay. Okay, cylinder two, looks like that on the inside. This bolt's completely dry. This one is very wet. Ooh. Gentle. Cylinder three. Looks like that on the inside. Again, one wet, one dry. Cool. Okay. Same thing, four, looks like that, and another one, wet and dry. Fascinating. Here we are at the end, looks like this, and both are dry. Cool, all right, well, we can start looking at pistons. All right, I'm beginning to believe the internals are not metric at all because we have a metric 13 fits by Swiggly and we have a half inch that fits very nice and snug. So going from the minimal experience I have, it's really easy to drop the pistons on the floor when you're doing this. So keep a hand underneath once you get the nuts off, of course. Okay, we got some movement there. Should have checked that before I took them off, but it looks like it would have had that movement otherwise. I don't know if you can see that. You can certainly hear it, right? It's significant, probably. All right, you guys, now I'm not gonna go through every little procedure with you. I, I just wanna clarify that. There are things that you're gonna want to do in here. For example, and I'm referring to this book here, okay, which is the Haynes Manual. Uh, get one of these if you're doing this because it details how to do all of these things. I'm just giving you a video representation so you can kind of see what to expect. Now it's telling me that there is a specified limit of play side to side in here and you can use a feeler gauge to determine that. I don't happen to have a feeler gauge with me today, which sucks, but I'm going to look up what that spec is. I'm going to look in the book. Let's see what that is. Oh, this book is getting dirty. It says connecting rod side clearance or end play. All right. That is 0.001 to 0.0019 inches. Okay, fine. I didn't feel too good about eyeballing it. So I grabbed me a couple sticky notes. Uh, it appears to be 
three sticky notes on cylinder one. I'll put on the screen, because I have no idea right now how thick that actually is, because I'll go and measure these after the fact. But yeah, appears to be a three sticky note gap, which tells me that this has way too much play. Cylinder two is between two and three sticky notes. Three will fit, but not as easily as before. Cylinder three, a definite three sticky notes. Cylinder four, three sticky notes. Alternating taps from a rubber mallet on either side, I was able to break this loose, but it does get kind of suctioned in there with oil. So be warned of that. If hitting with the mallet is wrong, go ahead and slay me in the comments. I, I don't care. It worked. So here you go, you're free. Now, something I think I'm gonna run into, the repair manual, which I totally should have read, tells me that uh, if there's a carbon buildup at the top of your cylinder walls, you can't get your piston out. And I believe there is. So we might have to flip this over and maybe just hit with some gentle sandpaper uh, and get that out of there. Because again, I don't care about the cylinder walls. Sorry guys. But, oh yeah, sorry. Bearing. Looks like that. Hard to tell, but yeah. I'm going to put some dimples in these so that way I can tell what they belong to. I'm going to put them on the side of the oil filter. Cylinder one, oil filter side. There you go. All right, the repair manual also tells us that we should be putting some kind of hose on here so that it doesn't scratch up this machine surface. I'm, again, not gonna do that, but you totally should if you care about your engine. Put my hand on the bottom, let's see if we can get this piston out of here. My guess is no, but... Oops, that was dumb. Hey, don't put these nuts on there yet. Very dumb idea. Don't do that. <laughs> There's that carbon. Let's see if I can pound it out. The answer might be no. I might have to do that sandpaper thing we talked about. If you can feel a little lip in here, you need to make that go away or it's not going to come out. Just great. So I totally feel a little lip here. There's some carbon buildup. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Oh no, backwards. There we go. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that, guys. It's a piston. How fun. It looks like that. There's oil in there. That's good. All right, let's take a look here. This, fingers are really dirty. Definitely hitting the wall here. Real carbony here, so probably not hitting the wall there. Take a look at the rings. Rings are seemingly offset. All right. does one of those numbers okay well let's do this three more times there you go all right again don't know if I'm supposed to be using a hammer but if you decide it's okay Rubber mallet's good, and hitting an upward direction helps a ton. Okay, cylinder two. Looks like this inside. Marked it with two dimples on the side of the filter. There you go. Cylinder three, looks a little something like that. All right, check that out. Bearing, bushing, surface, whatever. Came right off, so keep that in mind. I'm just gonna have to go back on that piston. 
Ooh, much nicer. All right. Piston two. It's kind of similar to piston one. A little bit less carbon. Actually, quite a bit less carbon. Still see some of the machine marks here, but here, got some scoring. All right. Lots of carbon through here. We have rings. I'll do a full rotation for you. Okay. Let's put that bearing back in. Okay, so you can see here, it's got this notch here, shape there, shape, notch, all right? So that just goes right back in there. And you're gonna wanna put it in straight. I totally did not. Dude, I'm making this up as I go. It just sounds right. There you go. Looks a lot better. All right, cylinder three. There we go. Cylinder three. Looks like this. Actually, minimal scoring here. That's pretty cool. Wow, almost none. Check that out. Rings exist. I haven't the slightest clue where that just went. All right, pulling up on one side helps a lot with this. Hey, I found it. Okay, cylinder four looks a little something like this. All right, average-ish scoring. We got oil in there, that's good. This side. We have rings, so I'll do a full rotation. Okay. Hey you guys, and thank you for watching part three of this engine teardown video. If you like this video, hit the like button and then comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you like videos like this video, you can go ahead and hit subscribe and also click the little bell, you'll get notified. We've got a heck of a lot more coming your way. If you wanted to watch the other parts of this video, you can do so by going down in the description. I will have links or you can go to my channel page and click on the playlist.